So today I just wanted to do a quick video on the 12K PV and it trying to zero my meter at somewhat of a distance. The, the 12K PV is 75 feet away from my main breaker panel. And that's 75 feet, not physical 75 feet, but 75 feet of wire away. And the way it zeroes the meter is it uses CTs and they're current transformers and it tries to get an amp reading from my main panel. But the problem is it's so far away that signal is somewhat lost. So I wanna go over the original problem I have and what I've done to somewhat fix the problem. I think it's, a, it's a mostly fixed now. So if you don't know what CTs are, they're almost like an amp meter that you would have where you have the little clamp that would go over the wire and you can get an amp reading, except they're made to go inside of your breaker panel and read the amperage from the incoming power from the grid. So this here is my main breaker panel and this is the grid power coming in. And these right here are the CTs and they just clamp around the incoming power wires. So this is line one and this one here is line two. And the wiring from the CTs goes back to a regular ethernet cable. So the CTs come with about 12 feet of wire. So the 12K PV is supposed to be within about 12 feet of your incoming uh, main breaker panel or maybe your meter uh, from the power company, not necessarily 75 feet away like mine is. And some people may have the same problem. So what I originally did is I ran about 75 feet of Cat5 cable from here over to the CTs, but my readings were way off. And I think a lot of that has to do with the nature of how the CTs actually work. So the CTs are a current transformer, and like other transformers, there's a ratio between the primary and the secondary windings, right? So the CTs are a one to 3,000 ratio. So if you have 200 amps coming in on your main power lines, the CT is sending back only 66.6 milliamps. So if you only have 10 amps coming in from the grid, that's only like 3.3 milliamps. It's a very small AC amperage that is being sent back here. So that small amperage could be subject to noise that could be induced on the cable over that long distance. So what I ended up doing is I replaced the Cat5 cable with a Cat7 cable. So inside the 12K PV, the CTs, they plug in right here on the middle port at the top. And this right here, this black cable, this is the Cat7 cable that I installed. And when you look at it, the end of the ethernet cable is metallic. And the reason for that, a Cat7 cable is actually shielded. There's a, a shield in here and that helps reduce the amount of noise that can be induced on this cable. It makes it for a cleaner signal. And then this, this is the, the shield is grounded. And that's what this is. This is the ground for the shield. And when you plug it in, it grounds out on the metallic, uh, on the, the port there. So when I had the Cat5 cable in here, the first cable that I had tried, over a week long period, the 12K PV thought that it had sold back to the power company 70.4 kilowatt hours, but it had actually sold back 103. So it was like, that was like 46% higher. So it was off quite a bit on what it thought it was selling back. But on the import side, what we are buying from the grid, it thought it, thought it only bought a half a kilowatt hour, essentially zero. It thought that it had zeroed the meter and that it had done the job it was supposed to. But during that week, we had actually bought 43 kilowatt hours, not a half. So that was like 86 times higher. So the import side was off, was extremely off. You know, it was way off more than it should have been. So the power that I'm exporting to the power company now is within 0.6% of what the power company thinks it is. They're almost matching. And how much I am pulling in from the grid is off by about 6.6%. It's still off a little bit, but that's way better than like 860%. I mean, so huge improvement using the Cat7 cable. And if you guys end up having CTs at a distance, this might be something that you are 
you might want to think about trying is to try to use a Cat7 shielded cable um, over to, to help bridge that distance and not have any signal loss or noise induced on the cable. It's definitely helped me out quite a bit. So if the Cat7 cable didn't end up working to fix this problem, my next step was to probably buy a, an EG4 grid boss. Now that is a, it's like a service entrance panel. It's where the grid and I think up to three inverters can come together. And that panel, I believe, has CTs built into it. So it can monitor the grid power coming in and out, and then it controls the inverters that are connected to it and controls how they zero the meter. And of course, it would have been right, I would have installed it right next to the breaker panel, and it would have probably fixed all of my problems. But the Cat7 cable, I think it cost me maybe 50, maybe $75, I'm not for sure, but that's still way cheaper than buying a grid boss. So if you guys have, or you're thinking about buying um, an EG4 hybrid inverter, and it's gonna be more than 12 feet away from your incoming you know, grid power, you might consider trying a Cat7 cable to extend the CTs. You might uh, improve the reading quite a bit and get it a lot closer to what the true reading is. It's definitely improved mine quite a bit. But I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.